Looks like beer. We need a uh, deer nose. It is tea with a tea bag. Is it? Yes. But thanks for judging already. Judge that I went Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to the Matuska Tax Derby Live Thursday afternoon edition. Uh, we have a bitter rivalry, rivalry bitter. going on bitter. Um, here. And uh, uh, this kind of kind of goes way back in history. I mean, it's a little bit of man versus machine. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about John Henry. Some of you may be familiar with John, John Henry. Um, there's a little bit of folklore about him. And uh, John Henry was a freed slave. And John Henry traveled to West Virginia and in search of work. And he got a, a job at the Chesapeake, Ohio Railroad. And John Henry was um, extremely strong, extremely well muscled, well built, and uh, they made him a, a steel driver. And in those days, they had to go through tunnels, they had to go through uh, um, all kinds of rock uh, to make this, to, they had to blow up the rock in order to make it more manageable that they could haul it out. So um, they, John Henry, they had a drill, a hand drill, and John Henry would hit the hand drill and there was a person called a shaker that would turn this drill and the object was to get the dust out of the hole so they could put dynamite down there. So John Henry would swing his hammer, hammer the shaker would turn it, uh, he would swing it again, shake or return it, swing it, swing it again. And they did this all day long, and hence you would expect these people to be quite physically fit and very strong. Um, one day the captain of the railroad came, and he said, John Henry, I bought a steam driver. And the steam driver was to drill holes and replace the people like John Henry who would come from work. So, automation and innovation kind of takes away jobs. And uh, so he bought this steam driver and pretty soon a contest arose. Much the same as we're gonna do right today. Here. Um, it's new technology, new automation against the old stuff. And uh, so they set up this big contest. And when the gun was fired, John Henry had two 10 pound steel hammers. And he would pound, and the shaker would turn, and he would pound, and the shaker would turn the bit. And the steam steam driver was going what 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 with great automation and ease, while John Henry was driving, driving, driving. Anyway, long story short, at the end of the competition, competition, you know who won? I can't imagine who won. John Henry won. No. John Henry drove his hole into the ground 14 feet while the steam engine only drove his in nine feet. And John Henry said, if I lose to this machine, if I lose to this machine, I will die with a hammer in my hand. Did he? John Henry died after the competition of exhaustion, but he beat the steam engine. Much the same, Just like much the same here. as I may do here this afternoon. Just, you might die. All right. Wait a minute, don't you have a song to share with us? Oh, I couldn't. You will. I can't, I can't. <laughs> I can hardly play the guitar in front of everybody. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> Ready? All right, here we go. I, I do have a little song about John Henry, great American folk hero. Is that like what you write on your... John Hancock. Oh, they're oh, they're that brothers, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. John Henry was a little baby, baby. sitting on his daddy's knee. His daddy picked him up, threw him on the floor, and said, This baby done wet on me. Was that the song? That was the song. Are you sure that's the song? I'm not sure that was the song. All right. Without further ado, um, we're going to show you deer noses today. And and uh, we have a mule deer over here on my left, just like the steam driver was on the left. John Henry's on the right. We got Brett Wingfield with the, with, I don't know, some newfangled artificial mule deer nose, which are funny looking pink things. And uh, 
but we've always put in septums for our customers. We've modeled our noses to precision. We make them look really, really, really nice. And uh, so I will be doing that manually, and you're going to be doing whatever you do. I don't. Now we're going to do what we got to do to see if we can it. if we can uh, beat the John Henry, beat the man with the ten pound hammers. And you, camera crew, can shout at any questions and things like that. We'll answer them. Um, we're not going to stop working because I am not going to die with a nose tool in my hand. <laughs> um, but you guys will answer any questions that you can, and we're going to show you a newer way, modern way of doing um, noses on this mule deer, and the conventional way which we have done for years. Are ready? We, are we ready? Okay. Who's going to shoot the gun? Um, I'm going to get my tools out. I can't. Oh, get me started too. behind the line here. You got to get more pumped up. <laughs> oh, I'm very, very confident. We're going to start up the machine. Um, and let me give you a little idea of what I'm going to do. Um, using reference to be much more accurate than some piece of plastic. Um, I'm going to insert, we, we use a mini septum for our, for our customers and that will go back, you know, a couple inches into the side of the, side of the nose, you know, up in this nasal passage and it's going to give a lot of detail. Any customer who looks through, um, we put a little blood vessels on this. Any customer that looks in there is going to see a nice flesh colored septum. Uh, some blood vessels if he looks real close he can show show his friends um, we're going to insert that I'm also going to model remodel that inside of the nasal passage because you know all know when you get a mannequin um, it's all foamed shut so I'm going to re-sculpt that I'm going to line my rough sculpture with some fix-it sculpt Aims fix-it sculpt and smooth it out real good so it shapes up onto the septum and uh, then we'll be able to paint it real nice in there. So that will be what I'm doing. And what do you think you're doing? I am going to take this freshly cast precision replacement nose that was cast from a real deer. So this is my reference. All of the details sculpted in, you can see I've got a nice little transition already put inside the nostril for my skin to butt up against. Um, I am going to adhere this to our MDSS. This is a 244N, which was this system, this form comes pre-cut to accommodate this nose. I'm going to put that on and I'll be about a few minutes ahead of you. Before I can see this is rigged already. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna, I will do a few little prep things. I'm gonna rough this up for good adhesion. I'll rough up the bottom. We'll rough up the mannequin, and uh, we're gonna put it on with hot glue. Um, you can use any adhesive that you want to, but um, you you start the engine whenever the. Just to get you even more exciting. You have Clint Ricky watching and he's, oh, oh, he's no. excited. Uh, <laughs> is he a steam engine guy or is he a, is he a John Henry? Of all the people. Of all the people. Okay. All right. Fire off the gun. So you say go. First thing I'm going to do is take off my antlers so they don't fall off. Okay. Oh, like, ready, set, go. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. We're both gonna go. I'm gonna wrap this up just a little bit. Like so. Is that step one done? Mom? Um, <laughs> step one, the yoga antlers is complete. We've got this lightly wrapped. I'm going to take an extra strength hot glue adhesive and I'm going to put a little bit right here on the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit right here on the upper portion. Notice the back is solid so I'm not going to add any, any glue coming in my nostril detail.
Well, and while, while John Henry is working on his sculpture, we can come back over here, and as you can see, if I had my eyes set and my other things going, I'd be ready to mount this deer. So I'm going to just put this cape up here. I might get Jacob to bring me a few pins. Wait. So you're telling me that the $16 that you're going to spend on that nose in the time that you save is worth it? Not cool. Well, we're going to see what John Henry comes up with here, depending on from what your shop rate is. And He's moving fairly fast. She made it to yeah. do here? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin Yates says Happy New Year from Australia. Our fires are out of control here, but still have time to I watch our favorite song. Stay safe. And Happy New Year to everyone. Really? And this applies to, to uh, water buffalo also. Except we don't have a water buffalo house. <laughs> I was going to say we're, we're a little ways out on having a water buffalo and I'm ready for them. But, um, now you can see I'm going to take this nose pad. I'm just going to bring Whoa. it up here. And you can look, you can see the fit here is going to be very, very nice. You look at the reference, you look at the rhinarium or the black pad of the nose coming around here just very nice to an edge. Comes back onto the mannequin. I've got nice little tuck skin there. And just tuck it in like so. So when will the white tail nose be available? <laughs> Are they already asked? Everybody <laughs> wants to know. Pretty darn quick. Who's asking? Do you think it was me? Yes. Carrie Gusso, Gus Taxidermy. Oh, Gus. Gus, we've got one coming. There we go. That's, that's about what you're going to have right there. If we were to, we could go ahead and tuck the lip at this point. Would you apply clay underneath that layer of skin to get? You certainly it? could, yeah. And a lot, and a lot of people will. I'm um, just a very, very thin layer. The nice thing about this plastic part is that it's very soft. So there, there are no hard edges, nothing that we have to fix over with, um, with the clay. But you can apply just a soft little pad of clay. Do some custom shaping if you'd like. Um, We'd also, if we needed to, you could use a little epoxy just to make your blend your transition, your seam. Um, but this is really what we're what we're after, and um, it's the speed and accuracy. The nice part about this is consistency. The left side matches the right side. We don't have to we don't have to sculpt that and uh, and create it. So um, really, really a kind of cool product is going to give you a a nice a nice shape um, with the thickness of skin. I I thin this skin pretty thin, but you do have a somewhat open nostril that your customer can see the septum. If you'd like to, we can close that down and we can even customize it if we wanted to. We can. Uh, this plastic will bend, will shape with heat, and uh, we'll show you how to do that here in just a minute too, since. John Henry's not quite caught up to us yet. A real good. Um, but he is carving away over there. I'm gonna sneak over on this side of the camera. And show you this is this is a nice tip for our mule deer. I can um I grab our reference. This is much narrower than a white tail. Um, so this nose is very specific to a mule deer. And that's one of the things that there are some cast 
whitetail noses out there, I don't know that there are very many mule deer available and because there are some subtle differences you want to see that. So um, the nice thing is that this nose matches up, is made and designed for the sagebrush mule deer series, but it can be used for any deer, any mule deer, um, any of your favorite deer forms. I don't know. How, uh, am I supposed to wait at the finish line and high five John Henry when he gets here? You just remember that old turtle hair thing. <laughs> um, I'm going to take this off. Actually, I'll leave it up here. I'm going to grab another nose and I'm going to show you how we can change that. Ooh. Brian Turpit says, I just received my big deer reference picture book and it's a must have in everyone's shop. You guys always nail it. Thanks for all your dedication. Thank you, Brian. We like them too. That is creation. And that is as nice a deer reference book as you're going to find. Uh, yes. Um, we can't, I don't think we can take enough of them to show us. No. Man, you're slaving away over there. Oh, God. Okay. You, can, you look over there. If you start to get some transparency, start starting to see through the other side. I can see a septum from here. Come over on this side, and we'll show you the flashlight. Well, we got a lot of crumbs in there we got to take care of, but that's what the inside of that nostril is going to look like in a rough form. Now we're going to smooth all that out with a little fix and start. And if you want to, Caitlin, there's our nice transparency in our cast part as well, similar to what Tom's got going there, a nice pretty cast septum. You want to see some detail from this side. Very accurate, very, very nice. Brian Olson sculpted these, we should let him know um, that these were sculpted by Brian. Um, sculpted specifically for his sagebrush deer. And I have Jacob heating up some water. We're gonna show him how to how alter that shape. The shape yeah. Which is kind of fun, you can, you can alter these. We have them open in this case for a couple reasons to accommodate the thickness of skin. Everybody's probably thins their skin a little more than um, more or less than others, so that's something that these are designed to accommodate. Um, but it can also be changed to alter the attitude of the deer. Um, if you want a real open nostril, we can surely accommodate that, or we can close it down to a real relaxed. Are you cheating? No, happy? I'm happy. <laughs> no, I was just looking at your nose. Now you thin your skin pretty as thin as anybody, and uh, that looks pretty nice. I think that's going to give it a nice look. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a that's a nice look. There's nothing been done to this do that we wouldn't do for our customer here. It's it's real consistent with uh, that's just a customer thing that we we have there. Still carbon, huh? Nope, gun carbon. Oh, gun carbon. Oh, gun carbon. That's good. Now I've just got a little fix of sculpt. Normally, I would add a little flesh color or red. Oh. Shortcuts? Taking shortcuts? Gonna do it white now? Well, this is yeah, nice. I have no time. Notice this is nice and fleshy on the inside. It's not white. I like to fix its color. But I can. I you can could color. It. You know where I could buy it color. Oh, fix its color, yeah. box its yeah. Comes in uh, different colors. Um, we showed them last week how to color it with red flocking. Um, add a little flocking to their fix its color. Now, anytime you get a mannequin, you'll notice that the detail of the nostrils isn't as deep as you want it, and that's a molding molding issue. If it was, the we wouldn't be able to get it out of the mold. So it's necessary to fill in that nostril a little bit. Hence, it is necessary for the detail to remodel this. I bet he's watching that pot, isn't he? Watch pot never boils. Oh, he did that before. 
Sean says he's heading that way Saturday morning to be there for Monday's morning start to the 2020 winter class. Oh, we do. That's true. Oh, yes. Class starts Monday for our 2020 Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy. Okay, now I've just allocated the amount of epoxy skull that I think I'm going to need roughly in there. And now I'm going to take a soft paintbrush. And you can use water, or you can use um, magic or safety solvent, and you can smooth all of this out. Todd wants a video on a full mount bear. Oh, indeed. In an hour. Um, that would have to be one of those, Caitlin, like you do where you do it real fast. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Garrett Sunran does a lot of those. They're fun to watch. You know, just smoothing this all out with. Water. Have you done your other side yet? Right. Oh, I am all tucked in and done and ready. I'm actually done in the second tier now. Um, AJ wants to know how much do they cost? So if you're asking They're about ridiculously expensive. the nose, <laughs> the replacement nose for the mule deer, we have a small and a medium, and they are $16.95. And then our sagebrush series mule deer, um, sculpted by Brian Olson, Kat Wagner, and Mark Connery, um, come with that slot that Brett had on earlier. And that is, you buy that one with the nose, and you get it a little bit cheaper than if you were to buy it separate. 14 I think, a yeah. bucks off. Yep. And it's already cut for you. Yes. So um, it's it's actually you can get this with this for at or under the price of most of our competitors just for their standard. Yeah, product. but how much does that hot glue cost when you don't oh, figure some of that man. stuff in? Don't you I know. Um so I'm gonna take this and while Tom is doing finishing his up, I'm gonna show you that we can customize these nostril wings. If we want to close them down, this is just hot water. Um, it's just shy of boiling. So I can put my fingers in it. It's very hot. <laughs> Joe Simmons says he's getting sleepy watching Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I quit. Fine. And then Dan says he's mounting on one of our white tail forms right now. His first from us, and he's liking it pretty well. Thanks. I'm actually just going to let that sit in there for a few minutes. <laughs> I got time. <laughs> I am going to go home and cry myself to sleep. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a little I might have to get this a little higher. So you do have to get your, your water pretty warm. Um, I might go pop that in the microwave for just a second. And it'll also heat with um, with a uh, heat gun, and I think I can show you that too. Because we're gonna have too much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a time. Um, Henry. Now another variation of uh, this method is to actually um, cut your nose off, and we do that sometimes. We get a lot of added depth and accuracy by cutting your nose off, that's here the full nose, where you can hold it in your hand, and then we have some real good reference casts that we trace that nasal passage onto the back of the nostril, and we carve in from the back, and we carve in from the front, and you can get some really nice, um, really nice accurate shape. Uh, Mark Cook wants to know if that cast nose is available on white tail now too. <laughs> Another one? Uh, we are working on it. Is it Mark? Was it, did the question come from a Mark? A Mark. Um, we are Mark, and this this is the prototype. Oh, 
Cameron's over there. <laughs> oh, you better go look at that. This is a big one. Um, we have a prototype to the white tail of questions coming up. Um, we have some small tweaks and changes we're working on on this. It's still a short distance away from maybe a couple weeks from production, but we have it in medium and we're working on large too. And this is just a heat gun. I don't have it turned up too high so as not to burn myself. But um. yeah, good watch here. Now I can change that nostril attitude. Just pushing that down, closing down the nostril a little bit, like that. And once you get to um, whatever desired attitude you might want, um, you can take it over to some cold water, which I apologize for moving faster than the camera. Water. That should set it pretty good. Might give it just a little bit more time, but if you look at it now, you can see how much I changed that nostril attitude. See, this one's closed down considerably more than that. So that's just one way if we wanted to open it up. And I'll do that on this other side. I'm going to heat it back up. We wanted to create a little more player nose. <laughs> No, you just behind. What? <laughs> I'm right where everybody wants me to be. <laughs> Die of exhaustion. Now I'm just going to open this one. If you wanted to for a real one. Wide open nostril. You can flare that up. And I can do that too when I grind, you know. <laughs> yes, you could. Here, I didn't stretch that too terrible much, but. See, this one's now open considerably more than that one. And when you, when you do that, it's worth saying, you know, turn it around, look straight on at it, which I have not. Um, open them for symmetry to make sure that you're, if you're going to change that attitude, make sure that you're doing it consistently. There, we're How are we tied, right? Almost, almost. Kind of just wrapping up here. Oh, we got another. Here's this other. Is that warm? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Oh yeah, that is much warm. Oh. So if you watch. You can see that. We can just push that down. We wanted to close that. Ooh, you're just on fire. I know. <laughs> Steamy. Um, and then if we wanted to, we can open this one further. And to set, anytime you change it, you can do this with fish fins. You can do it with a lot of the plastics. Um, um, but anytime you make adjustments, um, you have to come back and cool the plastic because it has a memory. The, the plastic has a memory at this point and it will try to go back to the state that it was in when it came out of the mold. 
So I'm just going to run this over to the sink since I got both hands occupied and uh, pull it down. Hold that septum in at the top and then take some more fix it sculpt and reshape the top of my nose. It's a tie, right? Yeah, for sure. They said it was a tie. It was. It was dead even right at the right at the gate. Um, here you can see how much that changed. So here's the closed down nostril. And here's the open. Now, how careful do you have to be when you cut your skin for that? There's a little ledge in there that you... There is a little ledge and it's very nice if you have good nostril skin to tuck right up tight to that ledge. Um, Brian's giving you a spot where finish work will level across nice and smooth. Um, you don't have to. If you were short of that, you just have a little bit of a, a little bit larger fissure. Um, if you overlapped it, you'll have just a little bit, um, you'll have an edge that you'll have to finish back over. But this is, he's got it here at a real accessible point. It's, it's in close. You can see we don't have to get in there too far with our modeling tools to do finish work. Now, will you glue that or would you pack that like you do conventional? Um, I would do just, personally, I'd probably put just a small amount of glue around it. Um, I would not necessarily super glue, but any of your better hide, hide pastes, you could put that hide glue right up there, and, and then I would pack it. I would go ahead and put a plastic packing to hold it while the glue sets. We'll have to heat that up and straighten it out, otherwise it's going to look like a perfect nose. How you doing? Well, I'm doing good, but I, I'm looking at your system and I'm thinking all your deer are going to look the same. They're going to look like they were out of one stamp. And unless they were uh, customized, which we could spend a couple minutes and customize some attitudes. Um, there are, I think there are places for each of these when we're doing, um, when you're doing production work and you're doing customer stuff. Um, we're looking to maximize our time and profitability. I think this is, this would be my choice, it might not be John Henry's choice, but um, this gives us a, a really, a very consistent, um, symmetrical, nice, easy to finish um, meal with notes. How's he doing over there? I'm doing pretty good, I think. I think it's all about, oh, it's too bad that's not pink. I know. <laughs> Jesse wants to know if you guys are ready for your new class to start. Oh, no. No, not yeah. quite yet. Yeah. No. We got <laughs> to Monday. We'll be here with bells on on Monday. When we get ready for class, it is a major undertaking. We have the floor strippers come in. Strippers come in. Dance poles. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, we get the, all the... Old, we have to scrape the floors because <laughs> the previous class dropped a lot of fixer skull, epoxy skull, yeah. and all that sort of thing. Um, so that all has to come off, and then it gets rewaxed with three coats. And because we have to move things around, um, we have to do three different versions, three different sections. Kind of class you guys running. Todd says, thank you guys for doing this online. It really helps. I will be ordering all my stuff from my bear mount from your catalog. Oh, nice. You will like our bear line, Todd. You got a pretty good bear line in your line of bear products. Can you hand me that little flashlight now? Corey Sawyer says 36 minutes, Tom. That's a lot of frog. Skin's hopping away. I'm going to add a little bit more up 
here. Uh, just, go, just don't make a big old just like a gopher tunnel under the skin. How does the lip line work with the reproduction nose? That's a good question. Um, let me take this skin off. So you can see from this that we've got a strong half inch between the bottom of the lip line and the reproduction nose. And if I were to take a pin right here where you would cut your lip slot, push that pin in all the way to there. So we've got that much space before you hit the, you hit the nose. As you turn and angle up, it's going to get a little thinner here. But I would, I would recommend putting the nose on first before you, before you cut your lip slot. But um, you've got that much depth if you go on an, if you go on an angle. And you're going to angle right up here to the front, a little steeper. You've still got just a, a little bit shyer. And you want to cut that after the nose is on, correct? Right? I would, yeah. I, I think I would cut it after. Yep. And you can do that still with a lip slot cutter. You can do it with um, you guys that use a scalpel or a knife. Um, you know, that's going to be, you're going to have a little bit more control of that. When you use your lip slot cutter, I would probably recommend um, countersinking that cutter into your Dremel a little bit deeper um, just to make sure you're not going too deep. So the benefit of the nose not going to the lip line would be you have more working room and it doesn't manipulate that lip line? Correct. We don't have any um, any hard transition in the lip line, and you don't have to cut through this plastic. You can still tuck into the foam, which I think tucking into the foam is going to give you a, a, a more consistent, easier to cut lip slot. Let's see that from the side. And there's just a little transition right here. Um, we would make that probably with just a little bit of clay as you play with the muscle. Um, but this is very smooth. You can, mm. I would still recommend just something very, very light amount of material right there. Make sure you don't have any, any transitions show through. We're pretty excited about these. Um, it took a little bit of work to get them into production, but two mule deer sizes, um, yep. and uh, we've got them that fit up to a 22, I suppose, about a 22 inch neck, I'm guessing it's that. Um, the large, I think the large size, size Brian's still working on. And that's still a pretty sizable deer. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this, and you'll notice the difference between, if you were to, caliper, the difference in the size of this portion of the nose, there's much less difference than there is here. So most of that transition that we're working on on those bigger sizes is up here into the body where it meets the head. So we're trying to get that sculpture consistent. But uh, there's not a whole bunch of difference in this, especially between the medium and the small today. What are you doing? I think I think I quit. You think you got a nice nose? Is it ready to go? Well, one second. Yeah. Yeah. When's the white tail nose going to be ready? I might give it a try. <laughs> very soon. Very, very soon. Um, this is the white tail nose that we're working on again. That's a prototype, and we'll have that. We'll have that ready in what we're going to call a medium that's that will accommodate a seven and a half. Pretty quick. Um, should be within the next week or so. And uh, larger size and shortly right. after that. Yep. Larger size coming that would correspond more to our seven and three quarter. Um, and again, most of that having to do with where it meets the form back here. Um, this is pretty consistent. We had a big eight and a quarter come in this afternoon. That was Easy. not very much. It was like a no. scant eighth of an inch wider than what you have here, which yeah. was surprising. 
I mean, I didn't have what you expected. It's hugely long. Very, very, very long. Yeah. But there. Are. And for our giveaway. Our giveaway, we decided to do, since it got called out earlier, as a great reference gift. Our giveaway we are going to do is the reference book. And it's, this is the nose one. So, great quality pictures. All by Dan Bretz. Lacey Cone, Matuska Taxidermy, really good quality. Um, we have the eye book, the nose book, and the ear book, and then we combine them. And so everyone's on, well, what's the benefit of getting all of them separate or together? You're going to get, I broke it up in the singles, you're going to get way more pictures. So it's basically a better reference book and bigger, whereas the all around is a little bit smaller, but you get a little variety of everything. So this is going to be our giveaway today, so make sure you like, share um, the video you are watching, and we'll be in the drawing for next week. But again, these uh, we've raised deer for 30 years, and we've gotten some really good quality pictures. Um, this is the all-around one. The all-around one, just to give you an idea, has um, the eyes. This is Brian Olson's favorite picture. Because you can notice that the horizontal pupil level itself, this deer was eating at the ground and his eye did not change. Um, but you got that. You have the three corners, kind of our, how we like to sculpt and model our eyes. And again, this is the all around book where the eye book would have all those pictures and then you got the nose and then at the end you have ear pictures. So there's some good quality ear pictures in there, but just great reference to have in your studio. But we are going to be giving away the nose one. Perfect. So, Perfect. the winner of that... Was John Henry? Yeah. The winner is Steve Macy, if you are watching. Steve Macy. So we'll give him a few minutes to chime in, and if he doesn't, we'll go to the next one. Um, don't forget, we are doing a competition for our catalog selfies. Um, so what we're asking for that is um, that you take a selfie or a fun picture or something just outside of the box and send it to us, and we're going to let all of the employees here that work so hard at getting your orders out to you and made um, we're gonna let them choose and pick one, and we've had some quite a few fun ones come up. Do you guys know what you are uh, doing next week? I don't know. A rematch, probably. Rematch. Because I can do this, John Henry. So just so you guys can see too, what everyone's watching. You have Vernon Harris Jr. standing in front of some mounts on the wall, holding his. Taylor Harrison of the cute little one. Stephen Hurd holding it by his pheasant on the wall. Do they get to see him? Yeah, they do. Oh, she's bringing him up. She is. Sammy with her deer in oh. picture. Corey Froth in his mailbox. I'm glad that didn't come to her up. Looks beautiful. <laughs> Bob Evans has a bear checking out his catalog. Oh. And on the <laughs> paper neck says, best catalog ever. Created people. Um, then we have Joe Martin with... His new Matuska taxidermy hat next to it, which is a great hat. That's one of my favorite. Oh, the cat. Can, uh, this is funny because it's a meme going around. It says, I, you I, don't know anyone famous, and then the cat saying, "This is my cousin." <laughs> <laughs> um, David Owen oh, with a cute beauty. pie. Looks like she's Christmas ready. Then we have. Way to go. Then we have. The we have, have the catalogs. Corey Faw, and he's holding his. Jason Rabbins has it next to his Kit Kat package and Breakthrough Catalog. Jennifer Thies, she's holding hers up. And oh, then a lot. Oh, there's some fun ones. So keep them coming because we are giving away $100 to the winner. So $100 wow. Matuska Tax and Cash to put toward all your reference books you want and your most cats. <laughs> um, David Sunkin holding it in front of Christmas tree. Campus to Sun with his dog tearing into a competitor's <laughs> <laughs> magazine with R2 on the top. And Justin Bach with a deer holding it up. So really fun pictures, you guys. Keep them coming for your chance to win um, the $100.
And don't forget to like, share this video. Like and share, like and share. Like and share, like and share for your chance to win next. Um, and we're just, we got a lot of new stuff coming out. We do. Uh, we have to, the catalog has to be cut off at a certain date, but the production here, the innovation of, innovation of the products keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going. We've got uh, new grizzly heads coming. We've got a wolf head series coming. Yeah. Uh, what else? We've got new whitetail farms. We've got new whitetail noses. Um, we've got new mule deer farms. Yeah. Um, with Bobcat forms. Bobcat's coming, yeah. Um, and that all just keeps on going. Just because the catalog came out, um, you know, we will send these out as they're available. New Habitat. And as soon as they're available, maybe they'll be online? Yes. We'll get everything online. As yep, as everything will go on. And there's a place that says new items and goes right up there right away. Um, Tom Dodder, if you are watching, you are the winner of the book. If you're watching, otherwise we're going to give it away to somebody else. So tune in. Yeah, I see more reference books in the future. Um, those will be going online right away. Um, we have a list that we've unearthed as we've been getting ready for students of goals that we've had for this year. And it's kind of fun because you can go through and you can scratch it. Oh, we did that, we did that, we did that. And at some point we probably made another list and that one got you know, covered somewhere. And uh, all the fun stuff that we New habitats and build your noses and all that kind of stuff. Fun stuff. Nathan Wheeler, if you are watching, chime in. Otherwise, it's going to go to a lucky live winner. So, Nathan Wheeler, you have a couple minutes here. Um, Lori Bill wants to know will you ever have small animals? Uh, we have a few. Um, we have some small animals. We've got some Little. Sydney Christmans, a skunk bobcat. Let's go we will. We'll, we'll never have a collection of, you know, as big as um, some, but... We've talked about carrying a few. Yeah. Um, we will get them as fast as we can get them, but remember, we're the little guy. We're the little overlooked guy. All right, so we're going to go to a lucky live viewer for that nose book, and the number... 1 through 30, 1 through 30, and go ahead and guess a number, and we will choose. First one that we see on our end, you will be the winner of the reference. Oh, Nathan yes. Wheeler just chimed in. Oh, Nathan, you're so lucky. <laughs> well, Nathan Wheeler, you have a reference book waiting for you. That's pretty cool. That did not show up on my end. We, it just commented, commented. And we're coming into show season soon. Well, show season. We are not ready for that. Here we've got Wisconsin's everything. our first, yeah. and that's a big one. Yeah. Anybody that hasn't been to a Wisconsin show, it's it's uh, yeah. one of the best that we go to, and uh, and it's they do it right. Yeah. It's it's big and it's well attended it's and a lot of suppliers and yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> After that will be what comes next. Maybe oh boy, they hit us one right after another. It's a week apart. We can't make them all. We're a little too small to divide and conquer, but um, we go to as many as we can yeah. get to. I think we'll do South Dakota, South Dakota Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska. Minnesota. Yeah. The UTA is this year. Yeah. Pennsylvania, Texas. Yeah, Pennsylvania, Texas. That's yep. good ones. We're coming. Um, We're coming for you. Yeah. Um, you have the shows, look for the competitor's award to see if it's at your state association to compete for that. Yeah. Highest scoring, highest scoring in, in uh, masters and maybe professional, depends on what your state carry, yeah. um, is going to carry. And it's the highest scoring of four entries. Four totaling over 350 yeah. points, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it's quite an accomplishment. It is. Just to do one is <laughs> difficult. I know. And for some of these guys that do four, it's, it's an amazing amount of work. Um, so some people are asking about our catalog. A lot of you should, some still might be getting it, but a lot of you should be getting this. Oh, do you? A lot of you should be getting this catalog in the mail. If you haven't got it yet, give us a call. If you got one that was completely tore up by the 
mailing, give us a call, and we're working with that with people we're too. <laughs> we had a questionable mailer. This yes. Year. Yes, and so they admitted it and they were replacing them. So if you have them slowly tore up, let us know. We can get it in your package. If you have ordered from us before, you should have them. Um, if not coming anytime, um, yeah, give us a call. We'll, if you've never ordered from us and this is new to you, and request and we'll get them out for you. Or go online and order something, throw it in your comments, and we'll throw one in your box. And you'll get it even faster because we're trying to be speedy delivery. And don't forget, if you ever miss a Thursday Live, you can subscribe to our YouTube, Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, where you can watch all of our previously recorded lives. Um, and then we will also be offering 15% off all the products used in this video from now until tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. So that's 15% off those noses? Yeah. Oh, oh my sucks. golly. So it take advantage of that. <laughs> and I think that's form with the nose is included. Oh, man. Ooh. So that's just something fun we do for our live viewers. Not everybody watches live, but we want to give back to you. So if you go to matusataxidermy.com and our supply page, you will see a Facebook Live section. And on that Facebook Live section, all the products that they kind of talked about we're using today will be on there. You probably better throw those reference books on there, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Thank we'll you catch you much. next Thank week. You school starts, but we're going to do it. Yeah. And give us a call, 1 800 488 3256. It was close. It was, it was, close. It was very close. It was close, but I, yeah, here we go. <laughs> here we go, the winner. That'll be moralizing. <laughs> so check us out, and if you've missed videos before, you can always go rewatch our Facebook Live videos. Thanks Thank for you, everybody. In. Happy New Year.